A couple years ago, I bought this S13 that had been sitting for the past 10 years. It had a dusty old SR20 in it that I cleaned up and I got running again. And after redoing the suspension and steering and doing a little bit of testing, a little bit of stress testing, I deemed it worthy to go to a drift event. So I took the car drifting, and after beating on it all day, the engine was pretty clackety, and it had low compression in cylinder two. So me and the homies pulled the engine out of the car, and then we proceeded to take it all apart to try to figure out what was wrong, and we found a couple of things. I believe this will be our problem, child. Show enough. I think that ring land let go. What do you say? Oh. I might need a new crank, dude. Dude, these threads are not ideal. Definitely, dude, they're gone, dude. They're done. What, those? Yeah. Go on, son. Well, you can get that on those big jobs. So after some research, I discovered that the Infiniti G20 sold in the 90s here in the United States came with a front-wheel drive SR20 that shared the same crankshaft as my rear-wheel drive SR20. So Chris and I went out to pick and pool, and we found this 95 G20 out there with only 271,000 miles on it. To be honest, you couldn't even really tell. So we began the task of pulling the engine out of this G20. The milkshakes brought some boys to the yard. They brought these two boys to the yard. <laughs> they, did. they had these chain fall hoists out there, so we hooked it up and we started lowering the engine down. Hang on a second, hang on a second. I didn't even see that. <laughs> oh yeah, now we're loose. That was it. One thing, dude. One thing, that was awesome. It's out, dude. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> that was wild. Kinda. Huh? I don't know why that was so... <laughs> <laughs> My only concern is the back is only supported by one wheel. Once we hoisted the car up, they gave us the room we needed to drag the engine out, roll it over, and start pulling the crankshaft out. Look at that. The threads for the flywheel bolts look perfect on this crank. Hold it like it's your <laughs> There's the numbers we need to figure out our bearings. Boom, dude. So now that we got our new crankshaft, we can begin cleaning parts and getting this engine ready for reassembly. All right, quick check in here. Chris and I got our state of the art clean room here. Got everything hosed down with degreaser, pressure washer. And we're about to put in the work, get this thing cleaned up. So here we go. All right, we did our first round. Then we went and got a bunch of oven cleaner little life hack action here. Wear gloves, this stuff is pretty corrosive. And then we got another jug of Purple Power. We've already sprayed all this stuff down once with degreaser, but we're gonna hit it again. So yeah, oven cleaner, spray all this stuff down. We've already done one pass and everything's already kind of looking way better, much cleaner. To get the last bit of, you know, this stuff that just won't come off with the pressure washer, we're gonna hit her with the oven cleaner and we'll be good to go. All right, we got all this stuff pretty cleaned up. Got the majority of the dirt knocked off of it. Everything looks pretty good. Valve cover's pretty clean. We've got the intake runners and the intake manifold clean. Lower pans looking pretty good. Front cover, front lower oil pump, rear main, oil pan, the whole thing, we're looking good. Thanks to this man right here, he helped us out. He's a man. Boom. All right, we're back home in my garage. Yesterday we got most everything cleaned up on the SR that we could in a solid day's work. But I brought the cylinder head home with me and I'm gonna tear into this thing and rebuild it here on the workbench. I've got some stuff here to get this thing cleaned up. I'm gonna use this scrub brush dealio that I got off Amazon. This is what we use to clean the block. This thing does a really, really good job. And then I got some Scotch-Brite and then I got this little drill attachment with these Scotch-Brite buffing pads that I'll clean the surface of this up with. And then I got some valve lapping compound, my little valve lapping tool. Um, I got this little socket that I'm gonna use to put on top of the retainer here and compress these springs. 
so I can take the keepers out and pop the valves out. I want to completely disassemble this head. Um, I have new valve seals going in this thing. But yeah, I want to strip everything down on the head, get it super cleaned up, lap the valves, get this head fully reassembled after it's all cleaned up and ready to go. Actually, perfect timing. I go to start filming this and all my new bearings showed up. So I've got all fresh rod bearings for the SR. These are all the main bearings in this box here. I've got uh, new flywheel bolts, rings, whole new head gasket, gasket kit. So we have pretty much everything that we need to get this SR going back together. But yeah, for now, we're gonna tear into this head and get it cleaned up. All right, we got our little spring compressor set up here. We got this first one. Keepers are ready to come out now, like so. There's our keepers there. So now I can release this thing and then we have 15 more to go. All right, we've got this intake side all squared away. I still need to get this exhaust side out of here. I won't make you guys sit through that. So here in just a second, you'll see this thing completely stripped. Last freaking one. And there's all the valves and springs, retainers and keepers. This head is completely stripped down now. Um, I'm gonna leave a lot of this hardware and stuff in here just so I don't forget where it goes. So I'm gonna take a whole bunch of cans of oven cleaner and I'm gonna douse this thing. Try to get all of this grease, oil, these stains, just clean this whole head up. Hopefully it'll look good as new when it's finished. Let's get a good full view of this thing for a before. Pretty crusty. And then here's the bottom side here. I'm also gonna scrub this surface really well so this will look good as new when it's done here. All right, we got this thing soaking in the oven cleaner. We'll let it sit there for a minute and we'll get to scrubbing. Okay, we got this thing all aired off, cleaned up. Man, what a difference. This thing looks way, way better. All clean in there. Nothing like a little bit of oven cleaner, some high pressure water. Front end looks nice and clean. Intake side is all good. Let's check out the bottom here. I still need to clean up the gasket surface, but I mean, all in all, look at that. Nice clean aluminum, no more crud and gunk. Heck yeah, man, looks freaking good. Today is valve cleaning and lapping day. So we got this little crock pot I stole out of the cabinet. Nice little mixture of purple power and water. Just gonna dip all these valves and springs and retainers, all that stuff in here. Let it soak for a little while. Once this warms up, I just turned it on. But once those get cleaned up, I will move on to lapping all of these valve seats and just try to clean them up. Nothing looks too bad really on the intake or the exhaust side. Everything looks pretty good. A little crusty. Some of the valve seals were definitely shot in this thing. I cleaned most of the carbon and oil gunk and stuff out of there when I cleaned it up yesterday, but there's a little bit left. I don't really care about that. I just want to make sure these seats are really good. I've already pulled out all the old valve seals. This thing's not fully heated up yet, but I'm going to go ahead and stick these in here and get this first round of exhaust valves cleaning. Dang, it looks like we might be able to fit all these in here. No, I think so. All right, get all these tossed in here. We'll pull these out once this thing is piping hot. All right, he's been in here for a couple hours now. A lot of the oil came to the top there. But let's take a look and see. This is probably pretty hot. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. That's better. Still needs to be rinsed off, I think. Freaking hot, I know that. Whew! Burn my finger. You can see the steam coming off of it. All right, another new day. We're back at it out here. We are going to clean these valves up really good. I need to clean all of the carbon and stuff off of the valve there. I mean, the rest of it looks pretty good, but I just want to clean that up and then I'm going to lap each one. And then we can start putting this head back together. So I've got this little piece of plastic straw that I cut a slit in and I'm just going to slip it over the top of the valve and then chuck the valve up here in this little drill here. 
just like so. And then I'm just gonna hold the scotch bread on here, clean her up. That looks pretty good. I think that'll work. Okay, we're all finished lapping these valves here. All these seats came out pretty good. We did one pass with the coarse and then another pass with the fine. And it came out really good, I think. All the valves look very nice. So yeah, we're looking pretty solid here. I'm gonna get this head flipped over and now we're gonna start putting valve seals in. All right, so to put these valve seals in, it's pretty straightforward. They just pop on. I've got a little 11 mil socket that slips over the end of that pretty nicely. And then I just take a little squirt of oil down in there like so. And we sit it down on top of the valve guide. Press, voila, installed. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out all the rest of these and then we can start putting the head together. I'm ready to be done with this head, man. Lapping those valves kicked my butt. That was not fun. I don't know if, you, if you've ever done it before, you'll probably relate. Lapping valves is not a good time. It's not difficult, it's just very time consuming and tedious. But I'm glad I did it, no regrets. It's not like this is a uh, high performance build or anything, but having that peace of mind knowing that your valves are as sealed as I can make them is a good thing. Last one. All right, now that we've got the valve seals installed, I'm gonna go ahead and put all the valves back into the head. So here in just a second, you'll see this thing completed. All the valves and springs and new seals are in. So now I'm gonna flip this thing over and then I'm gonna hit this bottom surface here. I'm gonna scrape the remaining grass material off with this. And then I'm gonna come back with a little green scotch bright just to polish this up. Um, I've already checked it with a straight edge and it's good and flat. But looking at these valves, man, this all looks so much better than it did before. Very clean. So here I go, let me clean this surface up and then this head will be finished. So I started cleaning this surface up same way I always do with this little buffer pad thing and some WD-40. It already looks really good. All these valves, really happy with how all the valve lapping and stuff turned out. That was incredibly boring and very time consuming, but I'm glad I did it. All right, we're out here. Chris is another day working on an SR-20. Chris is over here actually trying to pull this little deal out of this block. We already got this other one pulled out, poured a little heat into it and it popped out. Uh, reason being is we've got this poor boy head and block resurfacing set up here. So I took some sheets of 80 grit sandpaper, put some spray adhesive down on a nice thick piece of glass so it's nice and flat. So we got 80 here for the first pass. We're gonna knock the surface of that cylinder head and that block down, try to make it nice and flat and smooth. And then we're gonna finish it with some 120. And hopefully that's enough to make this thing flat and make that head gasket seal. And we're using the OEM graphite head gasket. So I think it'll probably work out pretty good. Do you concur, Christopher? Absolutely. Good enough for hooks four. Yeah, exactly. But the head looks better than the block, but yeah, Chris has already gone through and cleaned this thing up and it you know, we got a little bit of pitting just as you would see with an older engine. But uh I mean look at the finish this dude has gotten on here. Dude, just cleaning up all these surfaces. It looks freaking fantastic. Alright, we're all set up here. We got us some ATF. And like I said, the sandpaper, we're gonna see how this stuff works here. Alright, here we go. Let's see what happens. <sighs> Let's look and see what that has done. Okay. <laughs> You're like, how's it look? I think it's doing okay. It don't seem too bad. I was just scared. That's fine. You're safe and sorry. Yeah, it is. We just gotta look it up. <laughs> you all right? This ain't gonna be fast. <laughs> I, I came into this hoping it would be quick, but yeah, smooth that around here a little more. A little bit in it. A little 120 action. It looks good. It looks like it's doing more than the 80 did. A little bit, you know, like it's yeah. we're seeing result or, you know, it's more obvious, I guess. It's taking the black away. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Heck yeah, dude. Like it. <laughs> dude, it's like shining through the ATF, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that, that good, I think. I think we're going to about call that one. What do you think? Yeah, better it worked very well. Better than it was, I would say. All right, this is after several passes with 80 and then uh, several passes with the 120. We do have a little bit of staining here, but overall, 
Everything's nice and scuffed between each cylinder. Good enough for what we're doing. We're using the OEM graphite gasket, which fills a lot of imperfections. So I think that's gonna work pretty good. Got the head done, gonna move over to the block and then we'll get cleaning up and hopefully we can start assembling this bad boy. Okay, we got the block up here on the engine stand. We got the surface pretty darn clean, as good as I believe that we're gonna get it. So now we're on to honing these cylinders here with this old dingleberry, try and clean it up a little bit. One, three, and four are already in pretty decent shape, so those are probably just gonna take a quick pass. Uh, cylinder two is the one that we had the ring land failure on the piston, and uh, it's got a little bit of vertical scoring, but I think that hone should knock most of that out, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, don't mind that smoke coming from that drill, it may not last long. Look how it's smoking in your hand. Yeah, I know. I can smell it. Dude, that took a lot of it out. Yeah, all of it that I care about. This old Wang Tool Specialist. Okay, block is looking fantastic all of the cylinders are honed and all cleaned and aired out same with the head it's looking good so now we're on to pulling these rings and stuff chris is taking the rings off the pistons and we're going to dip it in this berryman's chem dip here typically cleaning carbs and stuff with it this is some pretty high test stuff we're not going to leave it in there for too long but just enough to break all the carbon and all that crap out of there so it's nice and clean over here we have a new set of rings so we're gonna put all brand new rings, OEM, Nissan rings on the pistons. Uh, Chris has a replacement because of cylinder two here. We had a bit of a ring land failure there, as you can see. So we're gonna be popping this piston off of this rod and we will toss one of Chris's new pistons on there. And while Chris is messing with those pistons, I'm gonna polish the journals on this crank here. Uh, I'm not gonna get too crazy. Probably just gonna hit it with uh, some 600 to grit up to like 1500 grit, just to kind of put a little polish on it and get the old bearing material off so these new bearings can start off fresh and clean with this Infinity G20 crank that we have here. Flywheel bolt threads that aren't completely trashed. All right, we're looking pretty good here. We got the block all cleaned up. I've already tossed the piston squirters in there in the bottom there. We got all of our pistons cleaned up here. They're looking real good. We got the new piston tossed on the cylinder two rod there. We're gonna check the gap, but before we do that, we're gonna toss the crank into the bottom of this thing here. We got a whole set of Nismo bearings. So these are all in line here. Chris went through the factory service manual. These are main bearings. These are rod bearings. And as you see, these numbers are slightly different. So we're basing these numbers off of the end of the crankshaft there. Top see numbers these. are crank. Those are rod. You take that number. Each number corresponds to the journal one through five. Right. And so that all uh, equates to a part number here. So we've got three, 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 four, five. So that's all math done between the crank and the block. So we know that we have got factory spec bearings in this bad boy, so it should run very smoothly. I think we got everything pretty much cleaned up, dude. I think we're about ready to start tossing this bad boy together. So let's get after it. Starting to go together here. We got our crank, our girdle, all of our bearings and stuff in. Once we get this thing torqued down, you can see how it spins, but it's coming along good. Looking nice. Got our factory service manual all printed out here. Going step by step, putting this bad boy together. Got all of our torque specs. Okay, Chris got this thing all torqued down. The crank is officially into the block. So let's see how this thing rolls over. Hoo 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 hoo, buttery, dude. Is it? Oh, yeah. Very good. Outstanding. So that's what you get when you use OEM size bearings, dude. This crank did not go with this block to begin with. And that thing spins just like it should. Love to see it. Sweet. All right, that's gonna do it for today. We run out of time. So next time you see me, we're gonna proceed and knock the rest of this thing out. As always, thank you, Chris, for the help. Yeah, He's the man, he makes this way easier. Look how good this block looks though, dude. Come on. Can't ask for much more than that. No, it turned out really good. Yeah. For just a basic OEM rebuild, dude, I can't ask for much more than this. Beautiful. So I've cleaned this valve cover up a little bit already, but it's still got some 
and grime and gunk and stuff all over it. And these letters are sort of dull. So I think I'm going to scratch bright this thing, scuff all of this up. Because I like the original color, you know, it's sort of a slightly metallic red. And then I'm going to throw a coat of clear over it. So it kind of keeps that OEM look. All right, I've cleaned and scuffed this thing. So now I'm going to hit it with some wax and tar remover. And then we can get to spraying it. This VHT clear stuff. All right, this is after a few coats of clear. It's looking pretty good, pretty shiny. Not great, not terrible, you know. Just shined up. Should look good on the engine. Might pop pretty good. I like that the letters are pretty shiny. Okay, day 57 or whatever. I don't know where we're at this point. We got our pistons all dressed here. We put new rings on all of these. Definitely didn't break ring two on piston two. And uh, the block is looking pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and Chris and I are here with the pups. We're gonna toss all them pistons in this engine. So here we go. So I don't know if I showed this or not, but we've also got Nismo rod bearings as well. So we've got these all lined out with the numbers that are stamped on the block to uh, correlate where each bearing goes. So these should spin just as freely as that crank spins, but we won't find out until we get these pistons in. So let's do it. Voila, block is together, all the pistons are in. She's looking good from underneath. Let's roll this thing over and have a look. See how smooth she goes. Buttery. All right, let's toss this head on. Before we get that head on there, we gotta do all this timing stuff. We just went through a bit of a debacle tracking these all down but chris had in all of his spare parts kind of a spare upgrade with all the metal this is a metal guide here and then we just swapped over the plastic part of the guide because this was broken off the original one but we kept the original metal portion here but timing stuff's looking good we're at tdc now chris has got this rtv and uh, we're gonna slap it on the front of there like that so now i think we're ready to put the head gasket on yeah yeah i, uh, I gotta spray the other side of the head gasket all right, we got the OEM gasket tossed on here. Chris put a little coat of copper spray on there just to help this thing seal up as best as we can. We need every bit of insurance we can get. Uh, meanwhile, Chris is over there wiping the surface of the head down. Give him one last look at the bottom side of the head. It's pretty nice, yeah? Oh yeah. Now I'm on timing chain holding duty. So I'm gonna hang on to this so we can stay on the right sprocket on the crank. And uh, Chris is gonna go ahead and pass this through, sit the head down in here. So this is the last time you'll get to see these pistons. Hopefully. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Don't flip on me yet. I gotta go. Freaking surgery, dude. Show me what those fingers are good for. There you go. Give me at the right angle with the dangle. There we go. Oh, frig. I guess that's how the end of that guy gets broke off. Yep, just like that. All right. There you go, straight down. Back to you. To you. Go back to you, you're way off the dial. There you go. All right. 
Let's just tie this thing off. That was stressful. Yes, it was. Dude. Okay. There we oh, go. Shit. <laughs> all right, head bolts. Okay, the head is all on. Looking good. It was, as you can see, a bit of challenging making sure the chain stayed up out of the way as you set it back down on there. We're just going to reuse the OEM head bolts. Again, this is just an OEM rebuild. We're not doing anything special. This thing's still going to be a T25 at 7 PSI. So just as OEM as possible. So we're going to toss some ARP lubricant on the threads of the stock head bolts and go through the factory service manual and follow the torque procedure. All right. After tightening all the head bolts to 58 foot pounds, now we go back through and loosen all the bolts. So now we tighten them all to 33 foot pounds. And after this, we did another round of tightening each bolt another 90 degrees more. Because you don't want to get caught half stepping with your weapon on safety. All right, we are fully torqued. Chris is over here bleeding our lifters here, submerged down in oil, doing his thing. Was that a welding rod? Yeah. Nice. 0.045 welding rod. I'm gonna drop those down in here, and then we're gonna move on to our little rockers and keepers there. And then we can drop the cams in, I guess. Toss the chain on, do the tensioner, and at that point we'll be pretty much into long lock territory, I think, right? Yep. Boom. There it is. Cams, rockers, timing tensioner, it's all there. Just stuck the water pump on. Now for the last thing here. Well, not the last, but this kind of seals the deal here. Stick this here valve cover on that I polished up with a can of clear coat. Dang. She is. That's a good looking engine, isn't it? Oh yeah. All right, quick update. Engine's flipped over here. We've got the crank, water pump, the uh, water outlet new thermostat over here, and then this water outlet on the exhaust side. And then we also stabbed Cass. Oh, that's upside down right now. But next, we are going to stick on the oil pickup and uh, put the lower pan on here, and then the, or rather the upper pan. Then the lower pan, this thing will be completely sealed up. We're gonna call this one done for the day. All right, it's been a long day. Chris and I have been hammering hard on this thing, and it's completely sealed up officially. Lower and upper pans are on. <clears throat> she boy that looks good that was one clean sr20 det all right it's a brand new day we're out here at chris's again we were out here last night we finished putting that sr20 together back there in the connex there and now today we've got to address this engine bay now we just kind of tossed everything back in but now that i've got that engine all put together and it looks all pretty and clean i just can't stomach putting it in this dirty old crusty engine bay I mean, you know, you see how dirty and everything is. And like, all this stuff is new, and I actually painted this at one point, but it's kind of dirty now. All new fuel lines and everything. It's still the original engine harness. And I pressure washed this car from the underside, but I never have gotten to actually clean this whole engine bay out. And you can see from the old master cylinder it leaked, and we got a little bit of surface rust on that frame rail. All right, I used the Kubota to drag from way over there up to here. To where I can get close to a water line and plug in. So we got our pressure washer here. So we can give this thing a good pressure washing. And I've gotten everything stripped off the front of this car or as much as I can get it. The wiring kind of ties you up a little bit, but like everything else we've cleaned on this rebuild, we're gonna use some oven cleaner. We're gonna douse this whole thing, subframe, everything that we can see. We're gonna hit with a bunch of this stuff and then we're gonna scrub it really good, clean it up as much as we can, pressure wash it. As you can see, I pulled this front cowl off. There's tons of dirt and grime and stuff up here. Well, we're going to get all this stuff cleaned up and uh, make it look new again. So we got this thing good and coated with that oven cleaner. We're going to let this sit for a second, soak, and then I'm going to hit it with the pressure washer.
And voila, there it is. We got her all pressure washed and cleaned up. Hit the harness and everything really good. Try to knock all the dirt off that that I could. Um, there's still some some little bits of stuff here and there that hopefully the scotch bright will knock off. But man, I mean, you could probably run this like it is without painting it. It would look pretty decent, I guess, at least clean. But we're not going to do that like I showed you earlier. We got to address that rust stuff there. And uh, this thing will just look so much better with a nice coat of paint on it. I was a dummy and I didn't take the VIN plate off. And the oven cleaner kind of ate some of the stuff off. Yeah, and as I touch it, it makes it worse. I kind of smudged it here when it was still wet. So, idiot. All right, we got the trailer hooked up to the truck. And then we got our Kubota here with a ratchet strap tied to it. Attached to the 240. So I don't have a winch. So this is my poor boy winch here. Let's get this bad boy loaded up. All right, we don't have a Kubota to pull this thing off here, so I just have this ratchet strap. I'm just gonna crank it back, hopefully get the wheel past this little ledge here, or at least close to it, and then roll her in there. And there it is. The S13 is in its new home for the next, I don't know, few weeks. I pulled my S14 out of here. I'm gonna load it up on here and leave it stored out of Chris's on the trailer while I finish this car. S14 gets to live out here in the woods for a little while. <coughs> there it is, covered up. Good to go, maybe, we'll see. Figured it'd be a lot easier to do all the finishing touches and everything and put the engine and everything in right here. Nice, flat, clean surfaces. But yeah, that's the first time this thing's ever been in this garage. Looks kind of good in here. Ready to make it pretty. Boom, we have a fully assembled SR20 here. I didn't film most of this. I did post it on my Instagram stories, but I went ahead and redid the entire hot side of this thing. Um, we just did the OEM manifold, OEM gasket, um, OEM hardware. Uh, we were lucky, none of the studs or anything stripped off in the head. So we're still running the stock manifold, stock T25 turbo here. Um, I did ISR, exhaust, and uh, turbo elbow gaskets, and we're still running the OEM lines. Uh, they all look pretty good. Uh, obviously new copper washers and stuff, but we're not looking to make like Buku power or do anything too crazy with this. Keeping just the basic T25, not getting too crazy with this SR. Just want it to be stock, reliable, solid. Uh, I did replace a bunch of hardware and stuff on here. And one of these studs broke, had to fix that. But we've got all new prevailing torque nuts. Uh, we got the accessories, power steering. We got a new water pump, uh, alternator, everything's on there. Um, just have to sort out the alternator bracket a little bit. But we got the intake side on. We did all new silicone hoses and all redone, all cleaned up here. I did bypass the throttle body coolant ports and just looped that back directly back into, you know, looped it back into itself. Uh, back in the day, everybody used to take these intake brackets off. Uh, my buddy Nick is gonna hook me up. There's like a Y-shaped brace that's supposed to go on here. Getting our heated hoses sorted out. And uh, like I said, we kept the stock lines. So we do have this coolant line on the back of the head, but that's all silicone. And we've got a little bit more to go, but for the, the heater hoses here, have that. We definitely want to keep heat. But yeah, we also did the factory head gasket and kept the factory paint. As you guys saw, we just tossed a coat of clear on this thing. So yeah, that pretty much covers this. Now that we got everything back home in the garage, we can start putting the final touches on this thing and get ready to put 
this thing back into this thing so they can be one thing together. But that's gonna do it for this one. You guys have to wait for another video before we get this thing all completely put back together. Hope you enjoyed this. It's been kind of fun, a little bit of a slow burn. Things kind of slowed down with all the logistics of getting this thing back to the house and storing the S14 and everything. But now that we got this all squared away, we're gonna start rocking and rolling. The weather's getting better, so we're gonna make this thing come together quickly. But yeah, thanks for hanging out and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.